probably shouldn't save the hardest thing for last, but that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Which one's the hardest? I think the rooster is the hardest. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm going to work on the hen, and I'm going to use... Um, I'm going to use gold core. You guys can't see, but I have like a pile of random, not totally random, but lots of different fibers next to me. Um, and I've got a couple of pictures to go by. Okay, so we need to do something similar like we did with the chicks and start wrapping. So I'm going to pull a four inch piece and quarter it so I have four thin strips. And at first I just need to kind of go out each each direction. So I'll go up to the head It's important to get that little hook in here so that you can figure out that tiny little head. I don't have quite enough wool here, but I at least want to start doing that. Then I'm going to take one and go out the tail. What happens when a hen eats gunpowder? Um, I don't know what. She lays hand grenades. <laughs> grenades. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's, that's so bad. It's good. So bad it's good. Or it's just bad. I had to go out and back. That's all. Awesome. You went about that? Out and back on his wobbly tail even? is awkward. Who's... Whose dog? This is so unprofessional. Jeez. <laughs> Trying to learn from your free video and there's dogs barking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have two more quarters. I'm going to go down each leg and back up. So not quite to the, ba the backwards bend. I love chickens, little poofy, poofy pants legs. If you're trying this and you're a beginner, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the wrong video for you. Don't, don't judge needle felting by your success on this one. Unless you did great. What do you call a group of hens clucking in unison? I don't know. What. A ensemble. A ensemble. A ensemble. <laughs> Okay, this time we need like a six inch piece because four is two inches too short. I'm on fire today. <laughs> quarter, quarter, quarter. Okay. First, we're going to do the X between the legs and then we're going to do the figure eight over the back. So, I'm going to go around a leg and then make an X, and then go around a leg and then make an X. And actually, what I want to do is, I'm going to change that. Rewind. I want to go around the butt or back and then between the legs from one side to the other. Then I want to go around over the back of the neck and between the legs. So what I was doing before was going to tie the legs together because I was only figurating around the legs. 
but since I'm going over the butt and between the legs and then over the neck and between the legs, it's going to keep the legs apart. That's what I wanted to do. That's actually what I wanted to do on the chick too. Ah. Okay, now that we've got some separation down here, now we're gonna take another piece. Um, this one, let's go up the neck and back down. So just up to basically the, the base of the back of the skull and back down. And that's just gonna start to make it wider um, towards the body and thinner as it goes towards the head. So you have that nice tapered, that nice tapered shape there. Now we can take another one and we're going to do the figure eight over the back. So the same thing we did on the legs, except the cross is going over the back. So I go around the butt, over the back, around the chest, over the back. Until that's gone. Now make sure you have some pictures out. Hens have very particular shapes. They have um, they have a nice poofy butt. They have um, a broad chest, and they have good fat drumsticks. That um, the um, what was the movie we were just talking about? Chicken, Chicken Run. Run. It's fun because it's like an exaggeration of the shapes, the caricatures oh. of the hens. Um, so it'd be kind of funny to <laughs> look at those. Okay. I want, I didn't get quite enough on her head, so I want to do that now. So I'm going to take this last piece that I have and just pull off an even thinner strip. Because um, I just need... I just need a little bit to wrap this head a little bit better. So if I go around the back of the head, underneath the hook and over the top of the beak, that's going to start to give me a nice little round head. Then I can just go straight around the whole thing. And you really pulled that fiber out nice and thin. Yeah, it was not much. Not too much at all. I have found for the waddle and the comb, the, the red pre-felt works really well and it's best to put it on now. Then when you put your other things over it, it's kind of holding it on even more. So um, let's double it up. So for the, like for the comb in particular, and hens have all different kinds of combs. Um, they sometimes have pointy ones. They sometimes have very flat, very flat ones. But what I want to do is put, it's probably a little bit wide. I go about three quarters of an inch wide. And then I'm going to use some of this core wool on the center here to tack it onto her head. And it's a good idea to go ahead and felt this pre-felt like a little bit more than it is because it will pull apart. Like if you don't have it somewhat more felted, it will pull apart. And then this is tricky, just like the rest of this project. <laughs> you want to stab that on the top of her head. So I'm stabbing that core wool right down into, I really want to hear that crunch. I really want to hear it getting down into, um, you know, the wrapped wire that's under there. 
And then once I have that starting to stick, now I'm gonna stab it together. I'm gonna stab the two sides together because their comb is one piece. It's not two floppy things. And the rooster works the same way. So once I feel that's pretty well felted, both on and together. Let's see if I can get rid of this fiber that's looking a little extra right there. Now I can cut it into a shape. So for her, I think I'm just gonna go like a small little rounded comb. I'm not gonna give her um, little points or anything like that, but you could. And then for the waddle, you wanna do something similar, except um, you're gonna tack it into the bottom of the chin. I don't know if I'm gonna have the rooster in me today, honestly. That's a lot. Yeah. So this I want to felt more because they're not going to get felted together. They're going to stay so I'm just trying to stab it so that it's a little less delicate. Have you ever heard the phrase madder than a wet satin hen? No. <laughs> Have you? Well, no, I'm just interested. Like, what is why a wet setting hen? Well, does that have to do with setting is like brooding? Is that where brooding comes from? The term? I'm oh, brooding? I don't know. So I just went in the center there and now I'll bring them together. I felt from the outside a little bit. This is, I don't know, this little detail is really fun to me. This is like a fun, a fun part of it. See, she could stay like that and be a skinny little. <laughs> and then you can just round. I see round on my, this I see on my list brood over it. If you're yeah, if you're brooding. But what's the wet satin part? Maybe they don't like to be wet. Wet satin. No, no, no. Okie dokie. Um, I want a core wool chest for sure. And then I think you're pretty much getting into top coat colors. So I've got like a half of a two inch piece and I'm just gonna fold a pillow. And go like dish. You're, you're almost off my camera. Sorry. There we go. That's okay. You see how this works, everybody? See how Milo is? <laughs> Bossy. <laughs> you're off my camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at this, and I feel like it's just a little wimpy, so... I to help hide this seam and add more bulk, I'm taking another piece and doing this crisscross on here. Just fatten her up a little bit. Don't worry, it's not for dinner. I'm not fatten you up for dinner. Let's speak for yourself. Okay, so the fun little shapes that they have are a series basically of little tacos and double deckers and um, all kinds of fun little things. So let's do the, um, first of all, I have to figure out her coloring. I think she's gonna have a light gold butt. 
I'm going to mix together some autumn gold and some merino, some camel. I want these real fine fibers because her butt should be nice and poofy. I've made them where I had some angora, rabbit angora on hand. If you have that, that's great for her tush. For <laughs> chicken butts. Yeah, and in this too, you're probably going to end up cutting fiber because they are so small. Um, it's often just too, um, too long. So this is a nice, like almost four inch staple to this mix that I'm making. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half and that'll give me twice as much. And then when you do cut it in half, definitely restack. It's easier to do smaller amounts at a time. And then you're going to put this on with the long fur technique by putting a little staple across the center and making a poof. Sorry, little lady. So I got about a one inch section. I'm going to go right across. Oh, itchy nose. I'm probably off your camera again. Well, a little bit. Okay. But this, you're that realizing is this is where I work. <laughs> And then um, go across with some core wool. And we'll probably do two or three of these poofs. This is called butt fluffing. I like that. Yeah. You gotta do some butt fluffing. Sorry if you're seeing my head. A little bit. I'm pretty zoomed. Nice. Yeah. She needs one more. <laughs> All right. Let me get it nice and nice and dense. So there's also a bunch of financial sayings uh -huh. that have to do with eggs. Uh huh. Nests, right, right. All of that, like your nest egg. Yes. Your eggs in one basket. Yep. Scratching out a living. Yep. Chicken scratch. That's not financial. That's handwriting. <laughs> Talks about chicken feed. Just having a little money. And then I really like uh, feathering your nest. What's that mean? Saving for the uh. future. She has a nice poofy butt. I'm going to round it out with the scissors a little bit. That'll make it more dense looking if it's all... There. Okay, now we can make um, the leg poofs. It's kind of like, since their feathers lay this way, you want to build from this direction up. That way everything you do is going to lay over what was under it. So for the leg poofs, um, I'm going to get a little richer in color. And I'm going to use a little bit of this Santa, Santa gold. And I have this bat of I don't know what that I made. Actually, maybe I'll just use that. I think I'll just use that. I'll get the Santa Gold back in there somewhere. And then um, I'm going to make tacos. So I'm just going to felt across the center and fold it over. I'm wondering, this is a pretty long. 
So let me try cutting it in half, restacking it first, because I don't want to jag it. I don't want to just cut that because it would have too jagged of an edge. So I want to get my fiber kind of to about the size that's going to work properly. Now I'll make my taco with a shorter. Gosh, this is pretty. I don't know what's in here. It's got a little bit of shine in it. That's better. Yeah, this is just great for blending colors, this project. Begging for colors to be blended or to use blended colors. So each one of these is going to go around a leg. So the folded part kind of goes at the top of the leg. And if you can, you can try to get, you know, try to get in there and get it around. So then she has these little pants. And then you can stab these little guys kind of up towards that's wrapped under there. And so that sort of poofs it up a little bit. Oh yeah, there's some like silk or mohair or something in here. So I'm centering it on the outside and then I'm turning it over and bringing it around the inside a little bit. But this is like, this to me is like all these little colors and pieces that you put on here. So fun. Now let's do her tail. And for that, I like to use um, some pre-felt like this, just to give it uh, some structure. And then we can put locks or whatever on top of it. Um, I think I'll use the taupe. I'm cutting um, about a two inch by four inch piece because I want to flop it over like this. That way I can put it on like this and then kind of shape what's happening here. So I think I'll go ahead and round these out a little bit. So on her, I put I did this in a white pre-felt, it's down in here, but I had like yarn sticking out farther than the pre-felt goes. So this would, this would actually be quite a bit smaller. And then the yarn I sandwiched in there so that it stuck out farther. I don't think I have a great yarn to go with this coloring, but maybe I have some, um, some locks that I can use. Oh yeah. I wonder if I want to go like a weird, yeah, let's do like this kind of weird taupey color. So I want these little ends to exist. Um, what is that? That's long. Yeah, it's really long. So I want them to stick out. So I'm going to make sure that that sticks out. And then I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut this because this is all going to get folded up in here. I guess I could try to see. I don't know. I'm going to cut a little bit of it off. It's, a little, it's kind of tacky, this end that was near the sheep. A little bit more kind of lanolin-y. So, but I'll leave some of it so that it gives it even more bulk. And then I think I want um, a pretty color on top so that when I fold this around, that edge isn't showing. So something that's going to blend into this taupey color. Huh. 
I'm going to use the butt poop color. Um, butt poop color? Or olive? What are you talking about? The stuff you used on her poof. No. Oh, her butt poof color. Yeah, there's a little bit of that left, so I could put that and then maybe start to fade to my orange. So I'm going to put a little bit of autumn gold as a next layer and then we're going to get the orange. So that's a nice gradient. Ooh. Yeah, that turned out nice. Thanks, Milo. This is the this is the part of this project that I really like. And I can probably get rid of a little bit of this under here. Or at least like break it up so it's not so or I could um I could cut some kind of like detail into it so it looks a little more feathery. Okay, so this we want to go over her tail like that. And they have, the, what's characteristic is kind of um, this more shaped um, shape to the tail versus, you know, a lot of hanging stuff. That's what's characteristic to the hen. That pre-felt sure gives it a nice... Uh... Yeah. I could have gone a little smaller on it. That would be a good bit harder to do with just roving. I think the pre-felt just gives you that sort of fabric like um, shape to it, you know? She's got a pretty fancy big tail for a chicken. Yeah. And this stuff, I'm just gonna let it come around here. Start to blend stuff together, hide some seams. She's looking good. Mm -hmm. So she'll get um, a little wings. Um, they I used feathers on the one. Probably do a color here that I'll do a um, um, shingle here to blend some fiber into the butt poof and create this chest a little bit. So I'm going to mix some autumn gold with this orangey color. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it because it is so long. And she's so tiny. So you might need one or two little kind of shingles going up her belly here. And the idea is to blend into that butt poof fiber by letting this fringe. So shingle means that you're felting about the center one third and then you fold this over and then that gently overlaps the fiber underneath. And then you do another one to hide this fold. We shingle in a lot of the chicks we do it, um, pelts we do it. So I feel like she's gonna need some kind of fun change in color, like maybe her neck is dark or like dark gray or something. This is cool too because doing these folds here accentuates her poofy chest. Okay. So a little 
wing detail. Um, a couple of little feathers would hurt for her would be perfect because it doesn't add too much. But I think I'll just I think I'll just fold a golden point, kind of like we did the chicks. Just fold a golden point, and then the neck feathers will come out and overlap that. So let's do that in a totally different color. So I'm going to try and restack a square inch. This is a little long. It's more like two inches. It is. We so ate, now I'm sleeping. Here. Yeah. I don't really love the hen sayings. Yeah, they're, you know, all of it really. The roosters too, you know. Scarce as a hen's teeth. It's pretty scarce. <laughs> Also, they do chickens have lips is apparently a question that people ask when you ask something obvious, like a dumb question. They right. say, do chickens have, this is new to me. I've never heard. I like that. Do chickens have lips? It's a nice way to say, look, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bother me with your stupid <laughs> question. <laughs> to which I would say, what is that even supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> Proving the point exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so before I put the neck feathers on, I want to do one Ooh. color here to blend that away. I have a little piece left of this. Those wings are fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we're gonna make her neck. It's like a. It's like a little skirt. It's like a skirt. You can see make the you can see best on the rooster. Yeah, like you make a little taco, but you want the curls, kind of like we did the tail, but you want the curls to stick out around the bottom. Um, hers is is just with fiber. I didn't even put any locks in it. She doesn't. She's made mostly with with just uh, roving. Um, so I've got this nice dark gray color here and I'm separating it out and I want to really tease out the ends because you don't want a big clump because it's got to be tiny where it ends near her face. So you don't want this big like, um, you know, sort of folded over clump. Actually, sometimes I don't, maybe we can even get away without having it be a taco by just putting maybe this part. Oh, that'll be pretty. What fiber is that? Is that this black is bear? Um, black bear, yeah. So I'm letting the black bear go farther out than the locks are. And I'm gonna felt that quite a bit. So instead of folding it over and making a taco, I'm kind of trying to make uh, just a panel so that this fiber can go onto her head. This looks like it might be a little bit. It's pretty long. So I'm going to back up a little bit, take this off, cut these shorter. So I'm going to end up with kind of a blunt edge. So I want to tease that out again with. Like just hold the bottoms firmly. Okay. I'm thinking about kind of a, a slight triangle. So it's wider at the bottom because her neck gets thinner at the top. And then it's 
do this again. So some kind of coordinating fiber that will fringe out and blend into the locks. You know, often when I apply locks, I do try to fold them over because I feel like it helps it, you know, stay on better. But in this case, it would be too bulky. So I'm counting on this wool to felt, um, help felt these on. Then basically, you want to put the skirt onto your chicken. And then just make sure that you... Don't totally cover the waddle. Like, see how once that fans out, how thin it gets a little sparse looking? Um, down here, like, probably a little bit more locks in there would be good, I think. you got to get it um, full, but then not too bulky. Right. Right. It is tricky. It's tricky. Can we play that song on this video? <laughs> Can that be the... Is it the Beastie Boys? Is it? I think so. That should be the, main, the intro music. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much... YouTube wouldn't let us do it. I'm sure it's copyrighted. Wouldn't. It's pretty much the theme. If the Beastie Boys knew... Yes. That we wanted there. They would be music. like, yeah. For needle felting, they'd be like. For the rooster and hen tutorial? Come on. Yep. People be giving us music left and right. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for Ellen to call us up, Milo. That'd be a good time. Mike Rowe. Abandoned us. We still have his dog. I know. Dude, I need your dog. I did, and I even tried to just send it to him. Like, just to give it to him. Right. Ooh. I know. <laughs> She's cute. I'm going to cut a little bit of this away so that the comb can, so just real easily, you know, I'm not trying to force too much fiber. What you don't want is for the head to get like honking huge because it won't look, it won't look chickeny. Totally changes her look with a dark face. Yeah. Try to decide if I want something different there or not. I think I might want a little bit of golden brown blending into her face. It's a little, it's a little strong. Like if I do her golden color back up here again. One thing that's cool about Merino is you can actually like break it with your fingers. So if you've got something really long, you can, you can like break it, break it down. Yeah, I think that Ooh. looks good to go back light again. <laughs> You're all, ooh. All right, this is a single needle job. So they often have their red, um, comes kind of like all around their eyes. Yes, they do. Yeah. So you can use some red merino to help this layer stay on. So see how it's like a process of working up this way? 
So I have these little red squares. I can use these. Just kind of round them out a little bit. What, tell me about this little white dot that's behind their eye. What? Yeah. Tell me about it. They have a white dot behind their mm -hmm. eye? It's their ear, I think. What? That's weird. <laughs> or is it eared? <laughs> I'm rubbing off on you. Wait, this is a good one. If we're looking for just bad pun play on words. Are we? Are we looking for yes. bad ones or are yes. we looking for good ones? Both. Hang on. Thought it was hilarious. What happens when you drop a hand grenade? So you didn't like that before. <laughs> um, I don't know what. It explodes. Oh, geez, Sarah. <laughs> Gosh, and I was, I, I was like, that's a good one. You got it. Was... What the frick? I can't even think of what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> I was an honor student is what I'm trying to say. Is there, what's that white over there? I'm losing it. This is maybe mm. stag white. Yeah, this is Serafina white. No, that's the kind of little merino or something. Oh. oh, that's all right. It'll work. I need the little white dot and this is, this will work. The little white ear The dot. little white ear, so I'm breaking my fiber down, like I just said that you could. And now, they have really have an interesting little eye with, um, you know, a gold iris and everything like that, but this is way too small to get that kind of detail. So, we're just going to do a black dot with the black coral wool that Marilyn got for me. And just stab, stab, stab in one place. I'm gonna get your little black dot. Oh, she's cute. Yeah. Do you know there's like five million why do the chicken cross the road jokes? Yeah, I believe it. There's really a lot of them. I don't know if I can do the rooster today. You've been felting for Not quite a long time. Not to people out in YouTube land what day it is. Sorry, my head's in the way. Okay, all right. Yeah. Last few stabs. Woo! Oh, she got polluted. That happens. So fancy. Oh, she's so cute. You talking to me? <laughs> She can even have use more butt poof. 